Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jam DiMatteis, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I'm here for Peter. Parker perverts. Don't talk to Lil Ray like that. All right, kids, welcome back to another episode. One exciting episode of the Paul Smith Player Cast. I am Phil, joining me as always, that short little killer. Who's the best there is in what she does? It is. It's a little hellfire, bub, and don't you forget it. You say bub. 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 All right, kids, that's now, right. my cigar? That's right, kids. We're going to start a month long, uh, well, here in other places. Uh, well, here at least, we'll be doing uh, Spider Man and Wolverine team ups, which we'll be seeing Wolverine all over this week uh, in the month of March. But th- right here, right now, we're doing Marvel Tail, Marvel team up. Of course I have it, I know. Easy to Well, you know why? Because these aren't on the Marvel Unlimited app, so thank goodness for my uh, 1990 uh, Marvel Tales issues. Special interest. <laughs> obsession. <laughs> that, nervous... That's the polite way of saying obsession. My nervous yes. Dick. So yes, Marvel team-ups 117 and 118 featuring Wolverine and Professor X. You know, I was thinking about that when I was uh, when I went down to get these Marvel, te- Marvel Tales. You know, since it's not only, you know, but uh, I'm like, so first they were in Marvel team up and that then they reprinted in Marvel Tales. So not only did they get two bites at the Apple, but like when the reprint was a dollar. So I'm just like, eh, I'm, I don't think the first one, first time was a dollar. No, it's 60 cents or something like that. Right? Yeah. So it's pretty old. It's from yeah. the early 80s, right? Something. Like, yeah. It's probably like early to mid 80s because, yeah, because, well. Yeah, maybe early 80s, yeah, because uh, Marvel team-up ran until 150, and then that's when they went to Web of Spider-Man. They're like, enough of these team-ups. <laughs> like, this kid's going to be around for a while. We can He can, he can uh, hold three books on his own. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we jump into these and then get to some new stuff? <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, honestly, I don't care if we're talking about anything but Ultimate Spider Man. All right. Uh, hold on. I thought I had the synopsis up. All right. Uh, right. It's got Wolverine in it. It's got a synopsis, but. Oh, yeah, Bub. <laughs> no, I looked before. They are, there's a synopsis. I just. Uh, I don't know. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Nah, Wolverine fans have an obsession. They have to do it. I know, but no, no, no. The, uh, Justin and I are going to be doing uh, there's Marvel Comics Presents, the whole Weapon X thing, and I don't think there's synopsis for that. No, there are. You just got to look hard. Bro. Oh, that's what she said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a habit. I just hear hard, and I just... <laughs> that's what she said. All right. Uh, Marvel Team Up number 117... From May 1982, Sense and Senses, Sense as S-C-E-N-T-S, Sense and Senses. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense, so Wolverine ain't gonna be in it. Oh my. (laughs) That's what this means. That's what I take it as. So what do you think of this cover? I mean, this is something. Hey now, leave Bobby Layton and Joe Rubin scene alone. I know, and I usually, I usually like, uh, I usually like their stuff, but I'm just like, I don't know, some, some of it's, it's a little try hard, and uh, just, but I do like the fact that Spider Man is in the back of it. Yeah, but some of the proportions. <laughs> Wolverine is up front. Some of the proportions seem off. <laughs> it's, 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 it is giving a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a uh, little feet, little waist, but it's fine. Oh, I thought I thought they were gonna say it uh, looks around me a more uh, more modern. Uh, you know who? Your mother's a whore. Oh no, I no. would never. Oh, okay, that's like the worst insult. Tom oh. DeFalco will not stand for that kind of thing. As he was the editor of this, he wouldn't stand for it. 
I mean, doing? he's no Jim Shooter, pow pow, but we do have yeah. in the Falco we trust sometimes. I was gonna say because I I do I kind of like the uh, Marvel Tales uh, cover. That's bet. way better. Yeah. They they knew what they were doing in the night in 1990. <laughs> You know, every decade has a certain feel and look, you know what I mean? Yeah, but once they hit the 90s, because again, it was like, it was so yeah, writer driven before, but then, yeah. yeah, they were like, hey, we can sell this thing on just on the art. <laughs> Big boobs and pouches. Uh, that's been a detriment ever since, unfortunately. Yeah. Again, it has to, it has to be like a nice combo. You can't, you can't favor one over the other. Some people do, though. Some people, it's all about the art for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it. Like for movies, I get it. There's some movies I can watch with the sound off, and it's perfectly fine. And Madam Web isn't even one of them, unfortunately. Madam Web's neither. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Yeah, you can't do anything with that movie. Yes. Somebody at work asked me. They said, "What do? You, what did you think of Madam Web?" I said, "Well, don't expect all the all the plot lines to uh, complete themselves." <laughs> I Check. didn't expect anything, and it's still disappointing. <laughs> exactly. Check out Capes Lunatics episode three twenty two for our review. I think that's the best line that sums it up bro <laughs> i didn't even expect anything and even got less than that i expected nothing it was still disappointing <laughs> sorry right. boys if that sounds a little too close to home <laughs> all right so this one uh writer jmd friend of the show jmd mateus as you've heard uh penciler herb trimpy uh inker you know, herb trimpy yes uh, inker Mike Esposito, colors Bob Sharon, letterer Joe Rosen, and editor Tom DeFelco. All the people who you think would be here at this time are here. Exactly. Yeah, I love Trimpy stuff. But like, when I hear her Trimpy, first thing I think of is the Hulk. Yes, correct. You know, the strongest Marvel character there is. There's my boy. <laughs> oh, please. I'm not Russell. I know. I know my place. All right. Um, the X Man known as Wolverine is out in the forest. Hold on, wait. Although, if um that girl from Madam Web who allegedly is going to be playing Hawk Girl has anything to say about, it, seems like Superboy Superman might be a soy boy. So we we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Wolverine is in the uh, out in the forest of upstate New York hunting a deer. However, he doesn't intend to kill the majestic creature. Only uses his enhanced senses to get close enough to touch it. As he does so, the feral mutant is unaware that someone is watching his activities from far away in an observation he center. He can't smell them. Uh, Doesn't have like scent for like a thousand miles or something like that. Who is he, Matt Murdock? <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Maybe maybe the mysterious villains. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the trench coat blocks in all the odor. That's why they always wear a trench coat. Their armor or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their armor. <laughs> mm. Wolverine suddenly becomes aware of a human scent and is surprised when he is confronted by a man on horseback dressed in a garb of a Roman soldier. Telling the mutant that he is trespassing on private property, the soldier orders Wolverine to surrender and accompany him to his master for punishment. Uh, it's not what you think, kids. Who could it be? Hmm. All right. we'll, we'll find out. Let's power through this. Extracting his adamantium claws, Wolverine refuses to go without a fight and gets one and gets one when an army of soldiers begin coming out of the woods around him. Wolverine relishes the fight, but as he begins gaining ground, one of the soldiers gasses him and takes Wolverine prisoner. <laughs> He's too much for us men. <laughs> enact enact a play in the Dutch oven. <laughs> No. Uh, when Wolverine's uh, when Wolverine's capture is brought is captured and brought to their leader, the mysterious professor decides that after his psionic experiments were foiled by Captain America and the Defenders, <laughs> hmm, hmm, you may know. Hmm, if you if you're Who regular, could it be? If you're a regular listener of Marvel Tales, you may know some some stuff that's going on. Huh? <laughs> He demands to know more about superheroes, ordering his men to capture another. Uh, so, yes, kids. Uh, Being a professor in the Marvel Universe is actually not a good thing. You're you're basically destined to be a bad guy. And I don't like that. I don't doc- like that at all. Doctors, professors. Yeah, it's, yeah. Higher education is, uh Yeah. Looking at you, Reed Richards. Oh, so I'll leave him alone. He, he cured. Cured, Doom did nothing wrong. He cured, he cured acne in the Marvel universe. Leave him alone. <laughs> mm. 
yes, pimple popper MD. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, skin cancer. Uh, pimple popper MD. Oh yes. <laughs> it comes back to the old man. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? Uh, but yes, kids, if you want that Captain America Defenders tale, Marvel Tales number 58, scroll down. As Loaf rolls her eyes. Uh, a short time later, Spider-Man is swinging across the city to meet up with his classmates, uh, Marcy Kane, Roger Hochberg, and his date, Mia Carrera. How? No one we care about. Well, yeah. However, before Spider-Man, it's so funny. There's like this like chunk of like, was it like the early 80s, maybe even like late 70s? Peter got like all these new friends and like, yeah, they never lasted. All the old ones came back. They definitely weren't his amazing new friends, were they? Oh. Nice. Well, as you as you keep telling me, nothing beats a redhead. I mean, I think the universe just knows. It's just a universal fact at this point. If you ain't got one, I feel bad for you. It's just a ginger world, and we're all living in it. Uh, however, before if you're Spider lucky. Hell, hell. <laughs> however, before Spider-Man can change back into Peter Parker to meet with them, he is suddenly attacked by a fleet of Roman soldiers and one-man aircrafts, attempting to capture him for their leader. This is so pretentious, but whatever. <laughs> Spider-Man lures his attackers away before, from the growing crowd on the streets and manages to lose them before they can gas him. As the soldiers fly away, Spider-Man tags one of their ships with a spider tracer so he can track them later. He then changes back into Peter Parker to meet up with his friends. Meanwhile, Wolverine wakes up to find himself in a mock-up of a Roman Colosseum, where he is forced to fight a chowster on horseback dressed in a suit of armor. Wolverine easily dismounts his attacker and rips off his helmet. This reveals what appears to be a helpless old man who begs Wolverine to spare him as he was forced to attack him. However, Wolverine's senses tell him the truth and he slashes apart what is actually a robot. He then the only reason you should have a, a robot is for horny doom, Dr. Doom purposes. Otherwise, they'll rise up and revolt. I, lo I love that uh, one part in this story when uh, Wolverine's like, hmm, pretentious robots. He's like, is this doom? <laughs> <laughs> Close, but no cigar. It's like, no, kid. They look like Roman soldiers. They don't, you know, doom, doom. They often look they're like They're not doom. fembots. They're the fembots. They look like him. So, doom either wants horny lady robots or to do himself. So, oh, that fascinating mind of Nick Gravando. <laughs> College dropout extraordinaire. Uh, he then slashes away out of the college was so expensive he wouldn't have to drop out and be a dictator okay we well, had to choose between college and uh plastic surgery after a while exactly and he chose neither <laughs> by this time spider-man has tracked the signal from his spider tracer to a medieval castle observing spider-man's arrival the owner activates a device that makes the castle mobile Still, Spider-Man manages to leap inside, but instantly begins dodging various death traps within. Elsewhere in the facility, Wolverine finds himself in a replica of a Roman Bacchanal surrounded by more robots. The robots... Now I'm going to tell you this, though. This is better than a battle van. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's stepping up his game a little bit, at least. I was just, uh, I guess, you know, the minute he walked in that box and all, I just heard you saying, okay, okay, this, okay. Okay, relatable content for me, okay. If you want to feel this a little more, okay. The robots disassemble and attack him from all corners, but he easily slices them to bits. When the battle was over, he is joined by Spider-Man, who just arrived via a trap door. I don't get it, he's a trap door spider. <laughs> Love it. At first, and you know, Jam totally was like, Yeah, yeah, the kids will eat that up. Yeah, They'll yeah. <laughs> At first, Wolverine thinks this is another robot and attacks, but his senses quickly tell him that he is dealing with the genuine article and stops his attack. The two decide to work together to find out who is responsible for their capture. Their captor sends a massive robot out to greet them, and it explains that its master is planning to gas the inmates at a nearby prison while simultaneously sending troops to wipe out a small town. It then provides the two heroes with a schematic that can lead them out of the castle or to its master and gives them the offer to stop him or stop these acts of mass murder. 
Wolverine responds by attacking the robot, ripping its head to shreds. A second robot appears, and when Spider-Man asks why its creator would attack these two locations, it explains that it is a test to see their abilities. While deciding what to do, Wolverine isn't concerned for the inmates, but Spider-Man wants to save both locations. When the wall crawler decides to go and save the prisoners, Wolverine is left with the task of saving the innocent people of Ivy Town. However, before he departs, he destroys the second robot. As Spider-Man slingshots himself onto the plane sent to drop the toxic gas on the prison, Wolverine confronts the soldiers attempting to annihilate Ivy Town. While it's the Ivy Town. That sounds pretentious. Let them die. Oh, it sounds like they're 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 living it up in Ivy Town. Wasn't that wasn't that where uh, Ray Palmer was in the comics? I, I don't think it was Ivy Town. I think it was Ivy something though. Uh, uh, <laughs> so what's the name? So uh, the Little League. What is it? The Ivy League. Exactly. While the wall crawler makes short work of the plane, Wolverine's appearance prompts the soldiers to teleport back to their castle. <laughs> When they double back, they find that the castle was gone. Realizing that it must have burrowed into the ground, they try to dig down to the tunnel. They witness its destruction, though, leaving them with no leads on where their mysterious attacker went. Meanwhile, within the castle, the mastermind behind this plot, a man named Professor Power, holds a meeting with his Because all the other good names were taken. That's his real name. Get their shekel then. Get your Ivy Town. <laughs> uh-huh, see? When they asked Ivan Tin or something like that, because uh, it's supposed to be in Massachusetts. So, when they asked, the more reason to let it bomb, honestly. Oh. Sorry, MA. Sorry, MA. There's, there, you know, there's nothing good in that state. Sorry. <laughs> Mac, Matthew Kona would like to have a word with you. Oh. Oh. But he does like Spider Man 2099. So. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? I can't hear you with that foot in your mouth. What? <laughs> He likes the twenty ninety nine stuff, so I, I think it's worth it. <gasps> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. When they ask where superheroes fit into his plans for a new world order, he tells them that he has much to consider. Hey, at least we wouldn't lose a lot of uh, Boston pizzas if they did. Cause... No, oh, <laughs> that's true. You know, I thought that were Boston pizza owners. So, what did you think of this one? for the team up but well it's it's Demetrius I believe power is well most uh Demetrius cuz yeah then yeah, what? he's just so like he just needs a charlie mustache to twirl you know I'm like why do you care about anything superheroes or anything if you have this much money where you can build these robots honestly be like Bruce Wayne moving money is your superpower moving castle it's like, you got all these different kinds of robots. I would never leave the house nor worry about a superhero. He's got the wrong priorities, bro. He, he has a place to live that can hide underground, and he has all these robots. Lil Zuckerberg? <laughs> is it Zuck oh. Lil would never leave the house. <laughs> never. But no, I like it. I think it was very well balanced. We got equal parts, which is sometimes what they struggle with in the team ups. Yeah. Like I like I like the actual like meet cute that's leading up to these two teaming up. I like it. Yeah, and again, of course, uh, did that because of course it's uh, Demetrius. He is uh, he knows how to tell a story, how to pace it. I'll say it again. They don't make them like that anymore. They really don't. No, they don't. Um. Professor Power. I don't know what's going on with this next cover either, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meeting Which... of the Minds. Here's the Marvel Tales cover. <laughs> and it's from Junior. What? It's from me to Junior. Mm -hmm. Junior? <laughs> they just didn't know... They, just didn't, they, they didn't have a solid plan in the beginning. I think later on, it like kind of... Uh, solidifies and you can kind of see the, the threads how they're all connected in the covers and stuff but like I think they're just like slapping it together getting it done at this point just hey, slapping well. it getting it done okay uh, alright so the next one oh yeah absolutely <laughs> oh yeah alright uh, Marvel team up 118 from June 1982 meeting of the minds and 
Looks like it might be the same team, except letterer Diana Elbers this time. So, mm. After fighting Professor Powers' Roman soldiers upstate, Wolverine invites Spider-Man to a training se session in the X-Mansion. Spider-Man finds the session too hard. Don't do it! Xavier will get you. Don't do it. Ah, so this is where you He's train. He's a, a teenager who needs a job? You got it. <laughs> ah, oh, See, I'm glad he didn't go to Professor X. I'm in a whole different story. Ah, would you like to be a child soldier? Exactly. Cyclops is like, it's not that bad, I promise. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the monthly rectal exams are nothing. Why do you think Wolverine's everywhere but the X Men? <laughs> it's like, how are you all these places? Aren't you an X Men? Aren't you supposed to be doing stuff? I wonder if the Beast has Harry Palms. Hail. Exactly. We're uh, going to leave our sweet, precious Hank McCoy out of this. Yes. Spider-Man finds the session too hard and mentally asks Professor, uh, thanks Professor X for stopping the session. He would have preferred a donut and a cup of coffee. Uh, so soon Spider-Man shares the breakfast table with Colossus, Wolverine, Kitty Pride, and Professor X himself. After breakfast, Spider-Man accompanies Professor X in his trip to Professor Power's mansion where Charles was invited for a meeting. Yeah, it was a play. He's kind of like, hey, I could trip closer to back to the city. Yeah, so he clings to the top of the car and falls asleep. Uh, they do not know still that Professor Power is the man who attacked them in the previous issue of this series. While Professor X talks with Professor Power about their latest political ideas, Spider-Man senses something troubling in the mansion and enters secretly. Uh, yeah. Um, tell me about it. It's ting ting tingling ting ting tingling. Uh... Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Hey, oh. Hey, Professor X is shocked that he figured out the connect. Like, oh my God, Professor X is so damn arrogant. Like, I just, I hate it. Didn't I wipe everyone's mind to that? <laughs> Wouldn't that been his first move? They're like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm about to wipe your mind. Does to everyone else. Uh, but he's attacked, but Spider Man is attacked by the same Roman soldiers he fought in, uh, last time. Professor Power reveals that his real intention me of meeting Professor Xavier is to ask him uh, to try to heal the mind of his son, which was seriously injured in the Vietnam War. Um, even worse than that, the worst reference, no tea, no shade to Diane Keaton, but like, you're, uh, you're in a castaway fantasy, Diane Ke Keaton? Hey. Wolf. Mm, hey, there's a, there's a lid for every pot. Come on. I don't think that, I don't think that's Peter's lid nor pot. Hey, oh, <laughs> that's not his pot. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh. Professor X finds the young man's mind is beyond healing and also that Power's mind is hidden. When he tells Power that he is not able to heal his son, Professor Power captures Professor X inside a psychoplastic cage. And then Power explains how he has been able to hide his mind from Professor X's scans. He controls Mentalo's mental powers, but he also, uh, also has to feed Mentalo's mind and he needs Professor X's mind to do it. You know what? I take it back. I just Google young Diane Keaton. Yeah, okay. I get it. <laughs> oh, my. I, I had to. The curiosity was killing me, so. Nah, I get it. I get it. You got okay. it, bud. Uh, <laughs> come on. Come on. Be Mateus knows what he's doing. Professor Power then, uh, then drains Professor X's powers in the Mentala's mind and plans to activate a machine to propagate a mind war against the Soviet Union, which is what he wanted to do in the Captain America. Oh, Defense yeah. I, as I just barely missed the Cold War as a child, uh, yeah, that's the thing that's still happening. It was actually pretty bad, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he literally says to Captain America, he's like, come on, kid. Come on. Come on. We can rock, knock out the Ruskies. We'll kill them with a, with a big mental blast. It's Captain so America. it's so weird when you have to remember that. It's like, it was a long time ago, but not really a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Hatreds were there. It was just, you know, it was just, they, they, they just hit it. And I was like, but, but that was a lot of propaganda, too, because we all know Russia's just painted molds with a vindictive dictator, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's great. good for the economy. We'll be all right. Sure. 
But Spider-Man enters and fights Fixer, an agent of power, while Mentality and Professor X fight a mind battle. Ah, future Thunderbolt. Ah, the Fixer. Uh, well, Mantella, in the end, Professor X wins, but some remaining connection uh, in his mind, uh, Power's draining machine in the young boy's mind, make this, uh, yes, uh, Matthew Power gets injured again. Professor X frees himself after defeating Mentallo and explains Professor Power that his machinations may have destroyed his son's mind forever. Ha ha ha. Professor X can relate. Oh my. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about messing up kids, man. That's his favorite thing to do, whether it's a uh, surrogate or, or actual biologically related. Yeah, he doesn't, he's not good with that stuff. No. <laughs> he messed up his mind, his son's mind so much. His son tried to go back in time and kill his, kill his da daddy's love by trying to kill daddy's rival. <laughs> Oof. Age of Apocalypse. No, that was actually his boo. <laughs> Age of Apocalypse, kids. All right, little fox. Oh no, it's solid. Listen, Jam, he's got it. It's solid. It's just like Professor Power, though. That, corny, corny. Plus, like most, like most, mostly associated associated with you know Defenders and Captain America, which I don't like. So I think there's some Micronaut stuff I might have casually read. Am I? Do you remember that? Am I remembering that right? Um, I really don't read Micronaut. With so, Professor but... Power, and I did not like him there either. Like they... he's not. A real son of a bitch. He's just kind of like incompetent, which is annoying. They you know, did, how, that's my favorite word, right? Competent. Yeah. They did reference Micronauts twenty five. Um, oh, fix. Oh, fixer. A uh, Mentalo and fixer over there. Oh, and uh, so. But yeah, I, I had, I, I haven't read any Micronauts, but uh, stay really? tuned. It should have been up your alley. Well, stay tuned. I, I can't. I really can't get the Micronauts. I don't know what it is, but yeah, stay tuned, Bo, because somewhere Justin and uh, Russell may be talking some Micronauts in the future. That is so surprising that you're not into Micronauts. <laughs> it's it's giving Transformers, you know. They couldn't hold a oil pan. I mean, Bootleg, it's never gonna be as good as the superior, but then you know, some people like that like some people like the bag cereal in in the in the cereal aisle, you know? I don't know. It's it's like the same thing. They wouldn't the, make it if they didn't. It's like the same thing with the eternals for me. Like I've 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 tasted micronauts through like you know guest appearances, and I'm just like, yeah. I don't get uh, it, uh, yeah. No thanks. Nah, fair enough. I just figured it would be yeah. right up your alley though. Mm. Nope. Uh He's like, no, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Lil's like, hey, kid, how about some Micronauts? And I'm just like, how about no? <laughs> uh, well, right. I'm sure I'm sure Russell and Justin will set you straight. <laughs> if you can't, no one can. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. That's right, kids. She's she's on the warpath. She's clean and sober. No nothing. Nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> the devil's mushrooms. <laughs> nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. Uh, Don't worry, we'll have it on a shirt eventually. <laughs> little oh, they'll sit on a mushroom. <laughs> Oh, like a Smurf. All right. Uh, yeah. So you're like an X Men fan. So yeah. What? What? What are your thoughts on these? Um. No. Like I don't know. Like honestly, when I'm looking back as a kid, I I like that the best form of X Men are is the animated show from the '90s. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it is. Like some of those comics, especially from like the the beginning up oh, yeah. until I'd say like. Before new X Men, eighty five. I'm just all, like, oh uh, yeah. Before all new, all different. Uh, at least, yeah. It's all kind of like, what the hell is even like when you're looking at it as an adult with the developed prefrontal cortex, right? You're like, what the hell was I reading? This guy's a total villain. He's a total predator. What is going on here? Oh yeah, I mean, Liz, Justin and I covered that very, you know, Uncanny X Men number one, and oh my god, Oof, that, yeah, it's like that does not hold up. Not it, at all. Here, get in this room. So shallow, like, like no, and it's the the writing is so shallow, and it's just like get in this room in five seconds. Yeah, 
it oh the dialogue oh i told Chase me to my core bro i told justin i said you know I, in that story xavier's like oh i may be the first mutant i'm the, like i know you know stanley had no idea at that point but i'm just like i just picture apocalypse and there going bitch please it, oh we need that somebody needs to do some artwork of that i know i know <laughs> xavier i may be the first mutant okay well you know he's a rich white man i'm sure he thought he had the idea first <laughs> oh true but yeah, no, like I said, it's it's rough going. Like I like like the I like the space stuff. I actually like the early stuff when they go into space and all that. That's really cool. But like the actual them dealing with like the other stuff, it's just so it's like babes, Magneto's right. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Period. <laughs> Why don't y'all kiss and make up and like you go join Magneto's side? Like what what are we doing here? I mean, they almost kind of do that. It seems like every couple of years they, you know. And then they ruin it. They're, they're so afraid to put Magneto and freaking Xavier together. They are so afraid of it. But, oh, yeah. like, everybody will tell you, like, all the modern fans, like, that found it through the movies, what's the best trilogy? New class. Why? Because we focus on who? Xavier and Magneto. Xavier and Magneto and their relationship. <laughs> even, um, even good old uh, Picard. Even the old good Picard version. They still had a very, uh, you could tell that they had a very good relationship. Oh, yeah. Both off, off screen and on screen, you know. Yep. So, I'm just saying that, that, that that's something that has to fundamentally be there. And now I think that, I mean, I think if X-Men was created now, just like we got that that weird origin story for, for Nightcrawler, right? Like, they could go with the weirder ideas that they had back in the day. Oh, did wouldn't you, bat an eyelash about it, you know? Oh, oh, did you see Mystique and Destiny are getting married? Yeah, I'm happy for them. Mm-hmm. I need a destiny figure though. I have a I have a rogue, I have a gambit, I have a mystique. Like I need a family reunion for fan fiction theater. Mm-hmm. Although nothing would be as good as those 90s X-Men toys. Oh, I mean they, 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 they're crap, but listen, they've held up this whole time. Mm-hmm. Not a chip of paint, not a nothing. Are those the ones like yeah, uh, this I had some from Toy that- Biz? The Cyclops uh, visor lights up and stuff. And- oh, no, no, not oh, the no. little figures. The uh, big, like, 11-inch figures. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I-, I had some of those, but the quality was actually crap. Like, I thought it was interesting because each action figure had, like, something. Like, it wasn't, like, your standard just, like, same mold and they just, like, colored it differently. Like, each action figure had a different, like, actual power that related to the to the character. They were super cool. And the Cyclops one, that's the best Cyclops they'll ever do. Uh, nothing to offer top that Cyclops. Nice. Sorry, Marvel Legends. Hate to be the one to tell you. <laughs> yeah, with the price on Marvel Legends going up, I don't see the quality going up, so I'm not happy about it, by the way. Uh. Anyway, yeah, no. This is, this is a pretty fun story. Like, Wolverine's tolerable in it. Like, I hate Wolverine team-ups, unless it's the Hulk. Like, those two... I totally get why it's a cash grab event every single time. Like, I just love their feral, their feralness towards each other. Like, I get that. But anytime Wolverine shows up somewhere else, I'm like, this could have been X23. This could have been anybody else. What about this could have Wol- been Sabretooth for all I care? What about Wolverine? This- what about Wolverine and Frank Castle team? <laughs> they make each other better, in my opinion. Because, like, Com- Frank's incompetent. Wolverine is not incompetent, but, like, Unless, like, you know, convenient plot point is convenient kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he gets where Frank comes from, but, like, he can't he can't oblige, right? But he wishes he could. That, 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 that's what I get from those meetings every single time. It's like, you know, if you were a little more competent, you might get me over to your side. Because uh. at the end of the day, Wolverine is a soldier at heart. Mind, soul, body. No yeah. matter the no matter the century, you yeah, know. Not mine. <laughs> you know who you know who like when Wolverine's w- written well. He reminds me of a well written um, Vandal Savage. Okay, okay. Which is hard for you to come be far come between, but like when you find the good Vandal Savage stories, that's what it reminds me of. That's how you do a man in time because it, it's gonna warp you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're that old. Yeah, so and they, they kinda lean into that. And they kinda, like I said, listen, Wolverine's a little deranged in the brain. We all know that. But you know, the X-Men keep him in check. Yes. And Our... also I ship him with Storm, not Gene. 
Oh, it. really? Somebody had to say it. Somebody you, had to say it. You do like the storm relationship? I do. Like, cause, like, it's like at the end of like, you know, towards like when he's like old man Logan, he's more mellow. Yeah. He's got some more sense and he like wants to settle down and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Better than lusting after Gene. Ah, uh, yeah. It seems creepy that way. It seems creepier with Gene. Anyway, yeah. Let's let's get into um. Oh, there was Edge of Spider Verse. I don't know if you picked it up. I did not get it. Did you? What do you think? I love the art. Uh, beautiful gowns. <laughs> um, beautiful gowns. <laughs> Uh, I will say the best story in it is probably the one by Jackson Lansing. There's a like ton of people writing on it, so. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's like anthology. But Spider Bite. I'm just like, okay, who is this for exactly? <laughs> it's just like you know, it's also more multiversal spider stuff. So I'm just like, Bleh. I'm yeah. Bleh. I, I mean, I'm 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 kind of over the multiversal stuff for everything. I mean, let the cartoon, let the car animated movie be its thing. Like, we don't yeah. we keep going back to this well. You know, Spider character, the, the one digital avatar she that made the debut in Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she she's here, too. Um, This was a $5 book, which I thought they were definitely going to charge a little bit more. So I'm glad that they kind of toned that down. Huh. But like I said, the artwork was really cool. And some of the stories are okay, but like, I'm, I'm over the concept in general, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Not a bad way to spend five dollars if you're a Spider fan. Not not the best though, because the best, of course, was Ultimate Number Two. Oh yeah. All right, we go in there. Yeah, let's 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 dig in, kiddo. Oh, you don't want to talk about Spider Boy or Spider Woman either? I mean, we can. That's all I was gonna. We can talk about Spider Woman. We don't need to give Spider Boy any airtime. That's true. But I was also gonna say it was the last issue of Secret Wars Battle World. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care about that. Either. Where, where, where they were revealed the Beyonders weren't testing Spider Man as it appeared. They were testing that symbiote he's wearing for the, you know, for the first time. Yeah. Lame. Basically, they're like, oh, well, this human, you know, makes this symbiote better. It's not just a, a mindless killer. <laughs> that that's like a bone to Eddie Brock. I don't appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> leave my lovable meathead alone. Oh, he he's doing the best he can. Okay, you hadn't met Eddie yet. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. I know. I hey. feel like it's a better fit. I do. Hey, we hey, we get uh, OG Hobgoblin slammed into a wall. That's the, you know what? The only thing better than a dead Hobgoblin is a beat up Hobgoblin. Exactly. Green Goblin, any Goblin actually. Red Goblin, Goblin Queen. <laughs> oh my! Uh, the whole damn Goblin. Gobble gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble. It's not November yet, please, please. It's always goblin season for Ray. <laughs> I'm talking about meat so natural. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to get bullied like this? Be a patron. That's right. If you have a mask, it's be a patron. That's right. Verbal <laughs> abuse. It's what we thrive on. Because Ray likes it hard. Uh. And Ray likes it long. So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. What? Green Goblin is a hero? Is Where? that what that was supposed to be? What? I don't know. What is everybody's obsession with not making the Green Goblin as, like, vicious and brutal as ever? Like, that that's what you should lean into. You shouldn't water down Green Goblin. That's my only, like... Wait, where are you, where are you getting this from? <laughs> More vicious and brutal than ever! Ultimate Spider-Man too. Oh, oh like yeah, a little yeah, yeah. water down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, we still don't know who the who the god. I mean, it could be Harry, but we don't know. And it's like it has to be Harry. That's the only take to take, you know. Or unless Norman faked his death or something. We've done that so many times. I, I don't. I don't think he's gonna go there. I think he's gonna give us something a little different. Why well, said? Uh, I don't know. I was trying to read into that uh, Ben and Jonah conversation. I'm like, it can't be one of them, can it? Uh, if it's Ben, I'm. Uh, I, 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 Jonah, you know what? I would like to be Jonah, but May, I was gonna say maybe Jonah, because remember he was one of the original like hobgoblin suspects. Yeah, so. suspects. Everybody was a suspect back then, though. I know. That, that's my only thing. Like, I just I didn't kind of really like. I'm like, no, I I need him to be a villain, villain. Like, I need them yeah. to remember that Green Goblin is his arch nemesis. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I don't know. The one thing that really bugged me, well, at least the second time around, was, <laughs> it bugged you. Ah, uh, I know the shocker. Oh, why did it bother you? I'm like Peter would fall for this a second time. I know <laughs> it's supposed to be he's brand new, but I'm yeah. like, it's the it's the effing shocker. <laughs> I was that's just, what made it funny for me. I'm just like, oh yeah, he's got a lot to learn. I guess, but after the first time, I was waiting for the second time for him to say, oh, okay, it's another slob story. Nah. <laughs> well, I think that they immediately are following up stuff. They're not dragging it out at all. It's just like, yeah. I feel like it's going to be like, boom, 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 boom. And I really like how they established his life in the first one, and they're really building off of it. Boom. I like, I like this Peter way more than any Peter I've liked Hale <laughs> in, the, in the last, like, decade or two. <laughs> All the Peters she's left behind. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I like it. Like it just it feels like a more daunting task now that he's an older man with more to lose, I guess, than just a teenager who just had a had a had a vendetta. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, I I like I like that like the one like the inner monologue like when he's like, you know, when you when you try to get back on track after having like twenty years stolen, he's like, or, you know, it's like he's like, are you ever going to be able to catch up? Or are you always going to be behind? Yeah, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of um, pre Flashpoint Barry, where he's just out doing good to do good. Mm -hmm. And I just, I really feel like ever since it had to be, you had to have skin in the game to be a to be a hero, especially on like the DC side. Yeah, to have um, somebody. Yeah, it, it, something's missing. Like you know what oh. I mean? And I think that's really at the core of what's wrong with DC. That's the rot. Like you can't just be a good person that wants to do good. To like, Bruce Wayne doesn't need to be Batman. He's a billionaire. He could use his money. Literally, that would be the best way for him to be a superhero is to use his money to oh. better the world. But yeah, sure there's no starving people or homeless people, but he's beaten up on the mentally ill, you know? Yeah. But again, I think the Flash is the best example. He was a good guy just because because he was a good guy for how long? Exactly. Oh, well, I think we do have. Uh, well, no. I was going to say we have Dick Grayson kind of, sort of, because like he did like that whole stint when they tried to make him like a cop, too. And yeah, it was but giving I, a little bit. It was giving a little daredevil, you know, do gooder yeah. by day, do gooder by night. Yeah. But again, too, he, he's always had dead parents. So. Yeah, he's always had that dead parent hanging over his head. But, you know, it, I'll okay. give Bruce this. He, he he did make him a better man by letting him get his vengeance. So he didn't turn into him. So yes. that's the only thing we can next thing we can say about that relationship. Yes. Okay, I got a question for you. What's what's worse than a symbiote from space? I don't know. What's worse? A symbiote you get from Tony Stark. Aww. No, no, no. I'm not saying bad, but I'm just saying. Uh, tell me that's not going to bite him in the butt. Of course. I mean, calling Vision. <laughs> calling Ultra. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be way worse than that. What if I, I was like, is this Stark tech? Or did Stark literally give him an alien symbiote? A hybrid? Maybe. Robots are a thing. Like with, with the whole AI, I feel like robots and AI have recaptured the imagination because it's so close to being like that near future, like like just an inch away from actually like hell. <laughs> from like being real. So I think people want to play with that idea a little bit more. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like artificial intelligence or mm. oh no, half and half or something yeah. like that. No, I'm still loving this book. Yeah, I just wonder. I'm like, okay, what yeah, is? Yeah, we we know Tony Stark's the captain of bad decisions. I'm like, I'm like, what kind, what kind of bad, uh, what kind of version of a bad Tony Stark decision is this going to be? Alien tech, but combination of both. I feel like it's definitely going to be a combination of both. I feel like Tony would definitely would do that. Mm -hmm. But could you imagine you you discover something that you didn't know missing, and you just you feel whole, but like. That's that's the whole conflict. It's like this feels right, but like I also have this whole life with so much more to lose now. I, 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 I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's just like yeah, someone robbed you of twenty years of doing you know what you love, and it's just like ugh. But the, I and again, I know they. I know he wants to build like drama and stuff, but I'm like, why wouldn't you tell Mary Jane? She was the one who kind of told you, you know, follow your heart or whatever, and do it, you know. Oh well, yeah, we gotta have we gotta have some marital drama. I guess, but I'm just like, why wouldn't you just tell her? I, I'm sick of that too. Like, let let's just let Mary Jane be Mary Jane, the love of his life, where he keeps no secret. They are Spider Man, okay? They are Spider Man. Watch out, Internet. <laughs> uh... No, like I hate that no, people blew that whole thing out of proportion because it's like 
they were, they were married. She said, I will carry this burden with you. You don't have to hide anything from me. And people, because it was that particular Irish boy, half of us said that, that people would have ate that shit up with a spoon, bro. That's what pisses me off. And we all know it. Do not act brand new about that. So that's what I mean. So, like, they, they're kind of like, I think the, the reveal, I think they're doing this, the drama for the reveal. Yeah. And he's like, well, I actually did decide to follow my heart. I hope you're okay with it. Yeah. Although maybe it is, she's not, and maybe Paul shows up. I don't know. Oh, don't you dare! Don't put that. <laughs> in. It's it's still Hickman, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Listen, Marshall Shadows got a lot, got a lot riding on this. He's like, don't you do it, Hickman? Don't you Hickman this? <laughs> don't bend this. This don't, 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 don't well. Ooh, even worse. Uh, <laughs> even worse. Uh, but I do, I do like that. You know, now him and the, him and his daughter share the secret. Thing. Like that's totally like an illusion to Mayday. I love that for us. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have a bad thing to say about this book, honestly. Yeah, no, no. Other I'm... than like, let Green Goblin be be a badass, please. Yeah, and again, you you don't know that he's that the Goblin's not a villain. It's basically, you know, it's just what it what are what is. Like, I just wanted him to show up and blow shit up. Uh-huh. Yeah, and again, just because he's messing with Fisk doesn't mean he's not a bad guy. It could just yeah, that be a... could be just a power struggle. Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh, think about it. If it is Jonah, that's why because he took the paper. Ooh. Uh huh. I would I... love to do something more with Jonah. Like they always kind of teased us with like doing more with Jonah, like him like leaning into it. But you know, ever since that Spider Slayer situation, <laughs> they kind of like no, we better not. So it would be a cool, interesting take on that. Threaten Madness Vigilante A2, Jonah? Well, and, and to be fair, it could be his Lex Luthor where he's just mad that he's not the guy in the suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Total jealous thing. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, not a great about- setup for the next issue, too, though. Like, there's so much to explore in this world. It's just so interesting, the twists that they're they're taking on it. Oh, yeah. Like a, yeah, I'm I'm still there. I'm still down for this. And like I like I said, uh, I think on our Daredevil episode, yeah, this sold out again. I I was told uh, within a couple hours on Wednesday, it sold out. So, is it going back for a second printing? You think? I would assume if it sells out in one day, I would assume it it's going to. If Marvel has any brains, they will. Yeah, uh, and th- and thank you, thank you, everyone. I think Marvel's hopefully they're getting the message. We'll see. They're kind of stubborn a little bit sometimes about things. They're like, give us the better story. They, 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 they put all their, their eggs into the Zeb's well basket. I know. Like. But it's like, I think I think fans are showing. And now they it. got egg on their face. Oh, well, well, hopefully it's egg. Ooh. I mean, that's me being polite. I know. No, but I think. Because they did give us black armor. So they at least they got one thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And they maybe, get Daredevil, so yeah, they got a couple things right. Maybe they're maybe they're seeing, you know, you know, we'll settle for one Spider-Man book a month if he longs to give us the quality. Exactly. And if it ain't amazing, so be it. Exactly. So be it. Did we want to talk any Spider Woman or not? If you want to, I can, I can talk about it. Because yeah, number four came out, which is the last Gang War issue. But uh, yes, it seems like this is going on past Gang War. Son, oh. I know. Oh, so cute. I almost don't. I don't know. A lot of writers, it just seems like they're like, yeah, no, we don't want to have to deal with kids. So either that either... gut punch in number three for the cliffhanger, though, and then it's oh, just like, yeah. let's follow it up with a right hook. Boom. <laughs> That's the one thing they they really do tug tug on the emotions of Spider. Uh, if you've read Spider Woman's stuff, they they love to just really put their fans through the ringer. You think. Daredevil gets put through the ringer. No, no, no. Spider Woman fans get put through Oh, the yeah. Ringer. Oh, yeah. Since like day one. Yeah. But like, she could have left her best friend out of this. Oh. Uh, I mean, Captain yeah. Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. But I do like how they do pull in, like I, like I said about the last issue, how they're pulling in like all the like female heroes and like it's not a rivalry, it's a sisterhood. I, I do dig it. Mm. Yeah, I mean they it, other writers have even been pulling this for the last couple of years where yeah, uh, Carol and Jessica are pretty close. So I mean I don't get it, but okay. I don't get how anybody can be friends with Captain Marvel's that version of Captain Marvel. I'm just saying. Mm. I mean it's not it's Kelly Thompson's version, so you know, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, and uh, oh, who who is this Madam Web character who's just? No one cares, Phil. No one cares. Uh, Stop no. trying to make it a thing. And it's and it's Madam Web too. It's, it's Julia Carpenter. <laughs> oh, they tried. They failed. Move on. Well, well, they kept what what little of the Spider Man franchise they have. So, boy, that was a desperate. You know what I heard that kind of leads me to believe that they are tricking people into thinking it's the MCU. You remember how like bet that Bad Bunny guy was gonna do that movie for like two seconds, and then literally within a month he said he wasn't gonna do. It. He, oh, the so he's like, hey, bro, you know that's not MCU. That's the Sony yeah. stuff. So like his agent and the studio were trying to trick oh, him yeah. into doing that damn movie. Yeah, I think like, that, that is confirmed. Oh yeah, it's pre- it's almost confirmed here. I think the uh, yeah, all the all the people, all the women from Madam Web, they kind of tricked and said, "Oh yeah, that's the MCU kid. It's a Mar, it's a Marvel movie, right?" Like they really thought they were gonna see Tom Holland and Zendaya. Oh, <laughs> you stupid, stupid kids! <gasps> oh my lord, we're gonna be the next Robert Downey Jr. No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry, babes. Better luck in the DC verse. <laughs> We're going to be the next Black Widow. No, you're not. <laughs> like I said, I find that so funny that Black Widow is just not a spider person. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's right there, bro. Well, she kind of is now. She has a symbiote. Yeah. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. Oh, did I see? Are they coming? Are they doing a new, Um, I think, I don't know if it's a mini series. I think they're doing like another like Black Widow Hawkeye thing or something. I wonder why. I wonder why too. <laughs> I mean, it would be great if they would um bring ScarJo back for that TV show, but you know, it's not. Well, no, 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 I'm talking a comic book. No, I no, know, no. I'm just saying, like that's the only way I could see that working, cause cause corporate synergy. Yeah. That'd be they, fun. They should. I, we haven't. I mean, we really like. That was so weird that we didn't really have a like like we've gone this on without like a real proper ongoing for Black Widow. Yeah, since Kelly Thompson's, yeah. That's weird, right? Well, again, is that just that again the synergy backfired on them where they're like, oh, there's no she's not in a movie or TV show right now, so there's no need for a a female led badass? Okay. That the boys and the girls love? Like, okay. Uh, Okay. As long as long as long as we don't get a silk in its place, I'm fine. Well, not very sorry, Ray. Yeah, we so- have to veto you on that one, bud. Sorry to all, sorry to all you Silk fans. Sorry, Ray. What the f? All, all, all Tuesdays. <laughs> they must buy so many copies. I don't know, man. I mean, has a Silk ongoing gone like past like ten or so, or twelve? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well. You can only fat so much to the same thing, Phil. Whoa! <laughs> gotta keep it. Gotta get a variety, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Some people like the fap to the same thing. Sounds like a bland, Jan. <laughs> no, that's not a Marvel Snap joke, though it could be. So yeah, no. That's I just mean, a really nice package. I'll just I'll just touch on Spider Boy. I think it's actually had an improvement, but I think it's too little, too late at issue four, as most people drop out on issue oh, three. Yeah. What did you think of the Miles uh, appearance? Wolf. They could have <laughs> left that. I don't think they did Miles Justice, nor was it meant to do that, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, or they think it's them saying, oh, look, Spider Boy's so much better than Miles. It's, it's giving that first Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meetup. Hey. Where it's like very one sided in yeah. one way. Yeah. Scroll on over to uh, our other feed for that reference. Uh-huh. If and you the- like Daredevil, you'll love the original. <laughs> oh, God. And then, then we get Boy Spider. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. I know. There's still one of the better issues, though, but I think people have tuned out. And I really love the artwork. Shout out to uh, Paco Medina and Ty Templeton. Yeah, the art is the art is good. And the cover was really good. Like I saw a oh. lot of people like walking by the shelf and going, oh, what's the... Oh, Dan Slot Spider Boy. Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> like, I literally saw so much of that. Like, people really? said it was Dan Slot, and they just kind of put it back. <laughs> It's messed up. And then, and then, Slot really, lo- really loves the show. Like he knows Spider-Man history because it's like the Vulturians. Like really, exactly. It's like, We're going. Babes, not the best choice. It's it's a deep cut. We appreciate it, but like maybe appeal to the mainstream just a little bit. 
just a little bit. But like the editor let it go. So, you know, what do I know? I mean, what happened to this setting up a shocker to get knocked down? Come on. <laughs> He's got to learn. He's got to learn. Who, Slot? Huh? He's been, he's been writing, spreading writing Spider Man in one form or another for like 10 years. When's he going to learn? <laughs> exactly, Phil. That's a great question to ask. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still waiting. Did you answer your own questions? I, I was going to say, I'm, I'm still waiting for Ben to start. <laughs> no, no. Some of the stuff is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just has to, like, sometimes he tries to go outside of his lane, and he doesn't know how to go outside of his lane. He's he's definitely a, and I don't mean this in a bad way, because a lot of a lot of people are one-trick ponies, and they, they, they live their whole life just fine. Well, well like we said, I think uh, I think Slot is good with, like, his own creator and stuff, but when he's playing with other people's toys, it's just sometimes, yes, he loses the plot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Superman. Oh yes! Like worst of all, Superman. Lil's like, I'll I'm sorry, Moon Knight fans, but we have it worse, I, and I will fight you on this. Lil's like, I'll do you one better. <laughs> There's only twelve issues of Moon Knight. Exactly. Uh, oh, wait. oh, and kids, for those of you, stay tuned, Ray. Who is Moon Knight? It's Egyptian Batman. Why would you do that to him? Why would you do? You are so vindictive. You know what? He's petty. He can't help it. That's right. He has a whole podcast about it. That's right. I do that with some salty bitch. Yeah. <laughs> now more uh, saltier than ever, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, for 2024, can we change the name of the show to Sober and Petty? Ha <laughs> ha. If you want to make that joke for the rest of the year, feel free. Sober, salty, and petty. <laughs> Sober, salty, and petty. No, it's just two people, not three. Uh, all right. Uh, Any... Yeah, I think we're done. We can wrap it up. What, what do we got for next week? All right. I'm still trying to get the Madam Web taste out of my mouth, so can you oh. make something good? Oh. It's still haunting my nightmares, bro. Like. I know. I know. Uh, next week, oh, more Wolverine. We're going to cover Marvel Comics Presents 48 through 50. We'll just do the Spider-Man and Wolverine story. So it's kind of almost like page count, like one issue. So Okay. Mercifully. Yes. Mercifully so. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and then in two weeks, we'll do Spider-Man 8 through 13, the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man Wolverine. Uh, you're, you're a little off, Phil. You could have timed it a little better. What? To line up with 350. Oh, sorry. He said, I can only I can only do so much, Will. I didn't know if the queen was gonna oh, I was I didn't know until the last minute the queen was gonna uh, okay uh talk on spawn three fifty, okay? Yeah, I love it. I love I know. spawn. I know you do. Not enough to have a whole spawn podcast, but I love it. And then at the end of the month. Talk uh -oh. about magic. No, when the, the boys come back uh, at the end of March, we'll talk Scarlet Spider 17 through 19 with a Wolverine guest appearance in there. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, see, it, that worked Everybody out. Everybody gets a Wolverine, you know? That's right. We're doing some on uh, X-Men Classics. So, yes. Although, that, Wolverine's not a classic. For he's 50, he he's 50, much later. He's 50 years old. If he wasn't part of the original class, I don't want you to do call him. Like, no, I'm kidding. There was a there was a class the X-Men book where he was in like every issue. I know, I know. He wasn't there from the beginning, but neither was Storm. So you know. See. And you said those 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 ones before them were crap anyway. <laughs> yeah, in retrospect, it was very shallow. It still was fun for a child to read, which is what comics were supposed to be. And now they're not even fun. Oh. Now it's just wallowing through all this self doubt and pity. It's like, hey, babes, I so, can go. I can go wallow in my own bottle of booze for that. So, oh my! So what came? So what came first? Uh, the kids, the kid, the, the the current kids not wanting to read the comics, or the comics not being fun. So the kids were like, nah, it's okay. I think the comics not being fun when it went down that dark, gritty path, and they didn't really come up for air for like a decade. I mean, you can only do so much. That's uh, why I got burnt out on Batman. Like, uh, God, uh, smile, boy. You're a billionaire. Your mother's you a got, whore. You got, you got Catwoman as your main lady. Your and mother's you got, a uh, whore. 
And you got old zipperless bodysuit lusting after you. Like, what are you I'm upset about? Oh, my. So what are you saying? The last decade of comics? There's nothing to get wet about anyway. Not even Batman damned. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that was a sock. <laughs> and worst of all, we found out Batman is not a generous lover. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, that's right. That's right. He does not take the elevator down. I don't think it. Selena puts up with that. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Don't pull it out unless you're going to use it. That's true for guns and penises. <laughs> this is the Daredevil podcast. All right. So, yes, kids. So, yes, send us all your Wolverine thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. For God's sakes, buy yourselves a T-shirt, a cup, a phone case. Or sticker. some sticker. Hell. <laughs> Oh my lord! Uh, the one thing we don't have nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. <laughs> coming soon, coming soon. Oh, the little hellfire market. Ah, oh. <laughs> where's our first customer? Ah, oh, hello, Justin. All right. Uh. And of course, uh, Lilith's favorite. If you just want to rain random money on us, I uh, use that Cash App link. Make it rain. And of course, the Patreon, where it's getting. Uh, crazier and wilder over there as uh yes our february episode is our avn uh adult video news review and in march i love go how you do the full name like like people don't know <laughs> oh please there's some new <laughs> you know there's gonna be somebody like ray who's not gonna know well i wouldn't put that ray i'm sure ray knows what it is uh but <laughs> and then in march go in the head of little hellfire for uh our talk on little hellfire conspiracy theories I'm well, if you don't want birds or real, give me a topic, kids. I'm scared. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, so, so, yes, subscribe to that Patreon because it is more vicious and brutal than ever. Should I just pick a topic out of the fishbowl? Like, is that what I should do? I guess. Just make you, it random. Is there something you feel I don't passionate care about? Way. You know me. I can rant about anything for an hour or so. Or if you want, make a make a list, number it, and I'll, I'll randomly pick a number maybe, or I don't know. I'll just do the fishbowl. Mm. It'll be fine. Uh, that's true because you're not filling it with alcohol these days. Okay. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's got to be put to some kind of use. So find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. I'm going to eat this up with a fork and spoon. All right. Miss Lil Hellfire. You can find her on the Facebooks once a month. Yeah, yeah. I'll accept, about, I accept requests once a month. For about five minutes once a month. <laughs> so catch her while you can. Uh, Either do the six or do the nine. Uh, Somebody's muffin's getting buttered. That ain't my business. But yeah, subscribe to that Patreon, kids. I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. No, no, it is not. Uh... Ooh, that sure was close. I didn't get manhandled. Not this year. <laughs> Although somebody did get manhandled. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Don't get fingered. That's right, Goblin. Don't get caught. All right, kids. Thanks for joining us again. Next time, Marvel Comics presents 48 through 50. That's some. McFarlane goodness, goodness. Mm-hmm. McFarlane. Oh my! All right, kids, join us next time. But until then, swing on back. Flip, flip, bub. And a schnick. Good night. <laughs>